Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks and the test server for update 1.24.1 just went live a couple of days ago and it is looking like it is going to be one of the biggest patches in World of Tanks history at least for many many years. Things such as a whole new branch of Polish tank destroys, vehicle rebalancing, map reworking, the fact that you can't have a crew that's less than 100% skilled now. A post-mortem mode, aka a review cam on how you got destroyed. Onslaught Steel Hunter, who cares about that? But Tour of Duty as well, which is your opportunity, if you're in a clan, to play the random queue, either solo or in platoons, to be able to get an exclusive clan wars, well, a previously exclusive clan wars reward tank. So first up, let's talk about the Polish tank destroyers. Now, I featured all of these on my YouTube channel yesterday, so if you want to know about all of these six in great detail, then go and check out that video. The long story is that they're going to be pretty okay when they're in a hold down position with fairly decent armor, good damage per minute, and then the uh, top tier tanks, the three top tier tanks, get a new star shells or star tray shells mechanic where they've got very very deep rifling on the barrel as you can see here and they've got the best shell velocity and they do less damage the further the shell travels but stay tuned for my video tomorrow which will be a full tank preview on the blue scavitzer so that you can get informed about this this hurricane or this lightning that's coming to world of tanks all in all these tanks they aren't going to revolutionize the game but they're definitely going to add a new flavor of all in close quarters combat as the top tier Polish tank destroyer will be the new highest damage per minute in the game, dethroning the Badger while also still having 800 damage, at least at 50 meters. Next up, there's going to be a large amount of vehicle rebalancing, something that I've all already featured on the YouTube channel. So go and check out exactly how they're changing the Panzer VII, the Foch B, the Super Conqueror, and the Minotauro. The, the, the short of it is the Panzer VII is getting some engine power buffs as well as also getting some gun handling and some penetration buffs. The Fosh B is getting the mother of all buffs with reverse speed, engine power, and also gun handling. The Super Conqueror is being nerfed a little bit, losing a bit of its uh, hit points and a bit of its damage per minute, but that's about it on that tank. And the Minotauro is gaining a weak point on top of the vehicle. And now we can actually see, thanks to the awesome Tanks GG, what the weak point is looking like it will be. And that is that it, it's going to be pennable. Finally, previously on the Minotauro, uh, this was the only top weak point on the tank. And then the viewport, well, the uh, cupola towards the left and the right, well, you couldn't pen them. Now, if it's not using its gun depression, you've got like a 60% chance to an 80% chance to go through them with regular rounds. If you load gold rounds, it's going to be a lot easier to go through that. However, when the Minotauro is using its gun depression, these weak points are, are really hard to pen with regular rounds and very hard to pen still with premium rounds. So don't think that the Minotauro is suddenly going to become useless in a hold down position. It will be. Just now, the Minotauro can't just sit in front of you and kind of face hug you and expect to be immune. Although, then again, if it is face hugging you, unless you're a tall tank, these will still be hard to deal with. So that's the, the beauty of now having the 1.24.1 test server so we can see what Wargaming were actually suggesting with the Minotauro. All in all, I, I, I still stand by what I said in my video. Super Conqueror enough. It won't destroy the tank. I'm not sure if it was completely necessary from my personal uh, stance, but it's not going to destroy the vehicle in a Wargaming. It is performing very well statistically. Minotauro needed the nerf. I think it's a good nerf that Wargaming are doing. I think it needs the weak point on top and it should bring it in line with other tank destroyers. Fosh B, they've gone too far. I hope they, they continue to tweak the performance of the Fosh B because if it goes in as it is, it's going to be completely broken. Uh, the Panzer Seven. I think it, it, it's going to be a strong tank next patch. A very strong tank next patch. I think it's currently an okay tank, and I do think it will become... No, I wouldn't say meta, meta, but it's it's definitely going to be taking a huge step there. I don't think this is going to be like the new AMX M454, but I think it'll be very strong. Definitely up in the, the top five, in my opinion, uh, heavy tanks in the game with that kind of a buff to it. Next, let's take a look at the map reworking. So firstly, Mountain Pass. Wargaming are addressing this southern area. This is the current patch. Uh, previously, you could kind of sit around here. I'm blocking my mouse cursor with my hand to get that out the way. Um, 
you could sit around here and then the enemies would pour in around this location and around this location and you just shoot them and then all you do is sit one tank up on the hill and a couple tanks here and then you could farm. Wargaming are changing this now so that they are significantly removing the bushes but they've actually added a rock. Do you notice? They've added a rock here. So that rock kind of gives the team an opportunity to, uh, to still sit behind it and engage tanks as they come in and go up the hill uh, but there's nothing stopping the enemy team from going and digging a tank out from behind the rock uh, unless they've got good hill support so all in all i think that's a good change uh i've had far too many op victories from sitting in that corner which they've been fun but uh whether that's balanced uh, remains to be seen it'll definitely be a lot easier to attack this hill the only thing that i think wargaming should do is consider changing this position back to being a little easier to shoot down on because it does feel that there's still a disparity compared to the northern position. Okay, Wargaming are changing the rock. They're reducing the height of the rock, which will allow people to shoot over and to defend this position a little bit better. So now they don't have to side scrape so much. Now they're going to be just able to sit hull down. Uh, that will mean that artillery will become very much more useful as tanks are kind of forced to sitting in this hold down position. On Corellia, what are Wargaming doing? So this is the before, this is the after. Wow, they're creating a better defensive plateau here, which I think kind of makes sense because usually all of the defending would be more up this part on the plateau above this. So adding in a second layer of defense with a hard position that you can hide behind to stop this from being an area which it just didn't really feel like it was too dangerous to push through. So I, I, I do think that that's good that they've created another layer of defense. They've also adjusted the position that will be quite important for assault uh, to allowing shots through this rock here. I'm not sure if that's going to be traversable or if it's just going to be that tall tanks can shoot over that. They've also very much thickened the bush over here, which will allow tanks in this position to engage more on, on standard and in counter battles at tanks that are pushing up along here. Um, for assault, it does mean that that bush will be more prominent and allow you to work either sides depending on which part of the map that your opponents are coming down towards you. So on mines, uh, this bush position here has been quite powerful, although I always think it's the coward's way out because medium tanks that do contest this location should be trying to take the hill. But then again, for your slower tanks and your hull down tanks, you know, like a, like a Kranvang, for example, I do feel like that position has been quite useful. Wargaming, um, whoa, they are nuking the bushes in that position, that's for sure. It's going to be a lot harder for the southern team to sit there and to use that bush line. I, I'm not sure if that was really too necessary. I personally found that mines was quite a balanced map. But if we look at the, the win ratio from Tomato GG, we can see that the southern team does have a significant advantage over the north team. So maybe that will help in this disparity. Oh, they're also adjusting an, another position. So this is before and this is going to be after. Okay, so this is the northern team's camping plateau to shoot the southern team's tanks as they come around the corner. So this was before and this is going to be after. So they're making these bushes closer to the rock so that that means that you can pop out behind the rock and shoot at vehicles that are going to be approaching. So yeah, big buffs for the northern team on this map and nerfs for the southern team. On El Halouf, they're removing a bush in the C2 square as it interfered with fire between heavy tanks. And on Outpost, they're raising vegetation in the G7 area to improve the playing surface for light tanks, added new stones and moved some vegetation to enhance gameplay for light vehicles. Where's the pictures for that one, Wargaming? But I do think any kind of changes to make that map better for light tanks will will be good because the, the south seems to be a bit more of a, a medium tank or heavy tank push along the... the forces the tempo of the map rather than the light tanks and vision. So next up, this is a big one. There will be no more sub 100% crews inside World of Tanks. So rejoice all free to play players or, or new players to the game. One of the most annoying aspects is going up to the next vehicle and then having to train a 75% crew if you spend 100,000 credits for a tank or having to not have those credits play a 50% crew and just feel like you're not even competitive, even in a stock vehicle. As if that was not bad enough, right? So what this looks like now is that if we go, I can click recruit um, a driver for my mouse and that's it. Boom. I got a 100% driver for this vehicle. So the next thing is that is interesting is Wargaming are going to give you an opportunity to turn 
crews that have less than 100% experience for their first perk into compensation in the form of experience crew books. So this is wild because for example, if I go into my barracks and then I click the conversion, which is apparently available for 88 days, I can turn 389 crew members who are in the barracks. These aren't on tanks and we can see so many clones that I have from all of the premium vehicles that I've bought over the years. And they all have 83%. And if you're wondering why they've got 83%, I can, I can explain that in a bit. And I could turn all of these into crew books. And this is wild. I would get with my 389 crew members 29 training manuals at level 3 and 8 at level 2 and 32 at level 1. But those 29 at level 3 are, are actually bonkers. Those, unless I'm mistaken, are level 3s that would usually cost 2 million credits and give 250,000 experience to whatever crew I choose. Accordingly, that means that my conversion payout is 58 million credits worth there, probably about 8 million credits there. And so I'm going to be getting probably just shy of like 70 million credits worth of crew books from crews that were previously just not doing anything inside my garage. Although I'd like to clarify, you should be careful that you're you not getting rid of any crew that you may or may not use. So for example, I'm wondering why my VK crew are sitting in the garage and they aren't sitting in a tank. Well, it looks like I just have a random VK crew from a long time ago. Okay, fantastic change by Wargaming in my opinion. You can just get rid of all of them, convert them all, and get a huge amount of crew books that then you can put into crew members that you're actually using. Now, the reason why you saw me have so many crews with 88%, that wasn't because I decided to grind them all up to that number. That is because Wargaming are giving all crews in the game compensation for the experience that they had to grind up. So going from 90% or 75% up to 100% in World of Tanks is roughly about uh, 38,000 experience. And going from a 50% to 100% of your major qualification is roughly about uh, 70,000 experience. You can see this on the now very skeletal Planet War update that if we go from primary skill and we choose to go from 50 to 100 and we click calculate, it's 95,000 experience to go from 50 to 100% of the primary skill. So it was actually a, a lot more than I thought. That is how much it takes to go from 50 to 100. Let's imagine we want to go from 75 to 100. How much does that take? That takes 72,000 experience. And how much does it take to go from 90 to 100 when you're moving uh, a crew from within its own nation and type of tank? Well, it's that 39,000 that I said. So that is how much it currently cost the top number from 50 to 100, the middle number from 75 to 100, and the bottom one from 90 to 100. So what Wargaming have done is they've given this as compensation to all of your crews, because a lot of people will be like, oh, but I paid to have that 100% crew, or oh, I went and I grinded, and all of that experience is lost now, and we don't make it easier for, for new players. Always a, a weird mindset, at least in my opinion. So that is going to be given to all of your crew members for free. So effectively, all of the crews that you currently have in World of Tanks will get a little bit of a boost. And so any of you like me who had a huge amount of crews just lying around in your barracks that you didn't bother to dismiss, they're going to get a load of crew training that then you can melt down into books. However, this isn't the only thing that Wargaming are doing. They're also changing the way that retraining works in World of Tanks. As you previously know, if you moved your crew for credits, they lost 10% of their major qualification and you had to grind 39,000 experience in crew training to be able to get them back up to 100% before they would be at optimum capacity. Now, what Wargaming are doing, if you want to retrain a crew, is that you will actually have to pay a penalty to their, their perk efficiency until you've grinded it back up. Sounds a bit weird. Let me show you a good example. So I want to move my type 71 commander to my type 5 heavy because i just decided i want to be the best type 5 heavy driver ever and i want to have a better commander on it okay so i'm going to click hanalor ritler and while she can sit in the vehicle and she will be 100 percent as efficient you'll notice that all of her perks are actually locked out so she won't be able to use them 
So that is a really big change. Previously, if you were to move a crew into a vehicle, they would go down to 75% major qualification, but things like Brothers in Arms would still work, so they would actually go up to 80%. Now, that was a big penalty to have 20% crew skill missing on a vehicle, but at least all of your other perks would work. Now, the perks won't work, but you can still play the vehicle with, at its like optimal efficiency, so to say. Well, not optimal, but it's base 100%. I hope I'm making sense. I know this can be tricky to, to follow. However, once we retrain her to this vehicle, then what we will see here is we can do it for free. She doesn't lose any experience, so to say, but we can see that her perk efficiency will go down to 20%. Now, what this means is all of her crew skills will only be working at 20% of what they could do. So for example, Brothers in Arms would provide a 5% bonus for the entire crew, and if you were to move all of the crew for free, then it would only be providing a 100% bonus at first. However, then you get an experience bar, and you will have to grind on that tank to be able to get the perk efficiency back to 100%. So this is a way of Wargaming effectively offsetting the disadvantage you have when you move a crew from being on its primary attribute, which will affect its raw crew skill and its performance in battle, to affect its crew skills, which still affect its performance in battle. Now, if you move for free, it's going to take 80,000 experience to be able to get her back up to 100% and working as you would expect. If you move for credits, it's instead going to take 50,000 experience. So Wargaming have made this linear now, whereas previously it was a curve and it was much, much harder to go from 90% to 100%, as you can tell by the calculator. So this is what it was previously to go from 50 to 100, but this is what it was to go from 90 to 100. So it didn't really make sense that it was nearly half as bad to go the last 10% as it only required pretty much double that to go the the 50%. But this is still 50,000 crew experience, which is the equivalent of uh, it's it's a little bit worse than it is now when i think about it currently as it stands it takes 39,000 ex crew experience to go from 90% to 100% which you can pay for credits in the new system it's going to be 50,000 experience so wargaming are being a little bit greedy there in my opinion and it's actually going to require 25% more crew training to be able to to get your crew back up to optimum level and if we think about it from a, a free perspective then that's 80,000 experience and when we when we actually consider it, I've missed out a trick here. I should have seen what it takes to go from 80 to 100, and it was 63,000. So that shows you that it's actually all in all going to require a little bit more. Of course, you can pay the gold price and then not have to grind that 50,000 experience and your crew will be working perfectly from the get-go. But gosh, moving crews for gold, that's something that I would never recommend anyone would do. And maybe Wargaming have realized this is why they're making it more expensive, at least with regards to the, the crew training requirement after you move them for credits. However, this makes me think, has Wargaming got rid of the ability to reset your crew and then move them for free? So let's try that. Let's try and reset for gold. And then let's see if I can retrain her to this vehicle. Will she take experience from this? Uh, she doesn't. Wow. That is pretty toxic, Wargaming. Okay, so if you move the crew now, after you've reset them, the crew experience doesn't get shoved into the, uh, the move, so to say. I would happily lose 50,000 experience from my crew skills to be able to offset having to do that 50,000 experience grind. So that's a huge loss, as what the best way was to do currently was to invest a crew book in a crew and then not train a skill and then move the crew for credits and they would be 100% right from the get-go, wouldn't cost you any gold, and Wargaming are removing that ability. So Wargaming, that's pretty lame that you're taking tools away from us. So all in all, this system, the big winners are going to be people who don't have crews and new players who are grinding up the tech tree. But honestly, I think the system might be a little bit worse for players who currently have resources or develop crews and they want to, to move them onto vehicles. So from my perspective, I think the system is better, but Wargaming, I would like to see you change the values down a little bit so they're more in line with what we currently have. I think you need to reduce the requirements 
by 20,000 to 80,000 total, and it will be fairer for everyone. Next up, Wargaming are adding in a post-mortem mode, which literally gives you a kill cam from the moment your vehicle was destroyed. So let's take a look at my live reactions when I tried it out for the first time. The first ever kill cam. Dude, he just penned my... Ha! Huh, look, it shows you the pen of the shell. Did you see that? So he it was a 50-50. That's cool. Oh, this is this is what they needed, was it? So the 347 is what they rolled. They needed 101. No EBR! Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I just don't want to die to anyone who's not the EBR. This will be fine. This will be fine. Yes, that's good. No EBR, don't kill me. Okay, good job. Good job, Super Mini Llama. Oh! Ah! So it does show. Wow, and it shows for an overmatch as well. Okay. So, 170 millimeter shell hit my tank. The three caliber rule was applied. That's called an overmatch. Three caliber rule is an overmatch. We took a thousand damage. Okay, fine. And that's it. That's all it says. Oh, no. It says enemy not spotted. But it does say that they rolled for 292 penetration. And their average penetration is 299. Here we go. So... Wow, look, it shows the ring of the artillery splash. So it looks like it was a direct hit. It does an average damage of 1,100. The enemy's not spotted, but we can see roughly where the artillery was. And it's a non-pen, blocked by armor, minus 410. Interesting. Damage randomization, plus 52. So it looks like it was very nearly not a, a kill. Then I guess if it did 192 with the potential damage being 550. Well, there you go. There are a few concerns that I have about this post-mortem mode and the fact that there's now a free camera so you can fly around the battlefield, at least inside the random queue. And that is that you can still ping the map. So a player could fly around with the free cam and use the map ping to show exactly where an enemy vehicle might have been sitting in a bush or might have knocked down a tree or might have uh, knocked over a bit of rubble. Previously, there was no capacity to accurately ping, once you were dead, where the enemy vehicle is. Now, by pointing your camera at the location and pressing your T key, you can pixel perfect ping where, for example, a platoon mate needs to blind fire, or alternatively, where your, your team might need to blind fire as well. And while I think this will be situational, and I can't imagine it happening every single time, it's it's still going to be a thing that will happen more. Next up, Wargaming are going to be bringing back Onslaught. Okay, no one really cares. I joke, I joke, but at least this will be the opportunity to get the Hurricane tank. So that means that Onslaught will start on the day 1.24.1 goes live. So that's most likely going to be in April. So get ready to uh, grind again, ladies and gents. And I'm kind of happy that Onslaught is coming then because that special version of the CS63 with a unique custom look and exclusive crew, I'm going to be putting that exclusive crew in my Polish tank destroyers as I already have a really good Polish medium tank crew. However, there is one additional thing that Wargaming are adding to Onslaught and that is that they are adding in a Bond aiming device. The way that I can show you it is by going into the, the compare feature and then I can click on the different equipment here. And then if I go to improved, then we can see it. There it is, innovative targeting. 9% improved accuracy even outside of a firepower slot. Currently, the best is a bounty aiming device, which is 8%. So this means for all of you out there who absolutely love the most accuracy that you can get, these are gonna be very sought after pieces of equipment to put on your vehicles, and you're gonna just gain 1% more accuracy than what was previously available as the maximum inside World of Tanks. This will be huge for certain auto loaders, and it will also be huge for very inaccurate tanks that want to invest into those big shots. FB405, I'm looking at you. So if you want to get your hands on this, then you're going to have to reach bronze in Onslaught and then part with a load of bonds. Although with Wargaming's anniversary coming up, uh, last year that was the way that you could be able to get the uh, bond rotation device. 
Are you going to be able to get the Bond aiming device from Wargaming's anniversary as well next month? That remains to be seen. Next up, Wargaming are making improvements to Steel Hunter so you can platoon with people. And then now possibly one of the most interesting things about this patch, and that is their reworking Tour of Duty, which I didn't even know this was a thing. Uh, apparently, if you complete daily clan missions, uh, three different missions with sequential com uh, completion, one after another, and then if you team up for the last two missions, and then you collect the raw reward manually, then you can get yourself the Caro de Combattimento, which is a tier 9 previously exclusive Clan Wars reward tank. So Wargaming are making these available for everyone. So um, I guess that means... For all of the people out there who try to 3-mark this tank, if you're sweating right now, don't worry. As soon as these are available from the random queue from clans, the requirements are going to get a lot easier. This also means for any of you out there who are currently not in a clan and have no interest in playing Clan Wars, but might be interested in doing daily missions with, by yourself or with a few friends to be able to get this tank, that you might want to look for a community. And I'm seriously considering making a completely low effort clan for that purpose, to go on a quest for the Caro. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is update 1.24.1. I think it's a great patch, all in all. The, the kill cam is fantastic. I think the 100% crews are great for new players. I think if Wargaming tweak the experience requirements, then it won't be even bad for, for current players. I think the only thing that sucks is you're, a, you're losing the ability to kind of cheese the system by using crew books and not training and then moving the crews. I think the map changes look good. I, I don't think they're going to destroy any of the maps. I think that they'll add to them. I think the rebalancing looks good. I think the new Polish tank destroyers look good. All in all, this patch looks good. I think it's one of the best ones I've seen in a while. And I, I hope it will, it will bring content for people to be able to enjoy, but also add some much needed polish to the game, right? With that kill cam. Okay, I'll leave. I, I can't I can't do better than that. It's going to add polish, but also Polish tank destroyers, right? Um, I, I don't know. How can I continue, continue this? I digress. But look, 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 all in all, I think this is a really important patch from Wargaming, and I hope that it will be the first one in many where they bring the game up to modern standards. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about 1.24.1. Looks like a monster patch, right? Uh, what aspects do you like? What aspects do you not like? Or do you think that it's just fantastic? Is this something that might bring you back to the game? Is an interesting one as well. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.